Hi, welcome to the Start Now Comprehensive Facilitator Training. I'm Rob McNamara, a licensed clinical psychologist with the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Medicine with Carilion Clinic and the Virginia Tech Carilion School of Medicine. I've been providing Start Now Facilitator Training and supervising psychiatry residents in the practice of Start Now since Dr. Bob Tressman introduced this program to Roanoke, Virginia when he became chair of our department in April 2017. I'm excited to guide you through this training today and prepare you to incorporate Start Now into your own practice. This didactic training is intended to be part of a comprehensive training program, including review of the Start Now manual and facilitator manual, as well as participation in the practice demonstrations. Here is a brief view of the agenda for today. First, we will cover information pertaining to the background and development of Start Now, including data from seminal publications by Dr. Trussman and colleagues. We will provide data supporting the efficacy of Start Now and discuss population Start Now as designed to help. The next section of the training will focus on a general overview of the structure of Start Now, followed by slides focusing on how to help implement the skills training program. Before we go further with the training, we will take a few minutes for you all to take a Start Now knowledge pretest, which will give you a sense of how much you already know about this program. At the end of the didactic training, you'll be required to pass the Start Now knowledge test. Please don't let the word test increase your anxiety. I'm confident that you will do well and be able to pass. Please take time right now before moving on to the next slide to access the pretest and complete it. Now that you have successfully completed the pretest, we will set the stage with some learning objectives so you have a sense of what you will accomplish at the end of our training today. First, you will be capable of describing the background and development of Start Now. You'll be able to describe the practical applications of the program, and you'll gain the information and training you need to participate in facilitating Start Now in practice groups. Before we get into the details of Start Now, I will share a brief history of its development. This first paper published in 2004 documents Dr. Trussman and colleagues' rationale for using dialectical behavioral therapy in a corrections environment and a review of actual implementation of DBT in the corrections setting. They also highlight that up to that point in time, while DBT had been clinically adapted for use in a correctional setting, these adaptations had not been published. As an overview, DBT was originally developed by Marsha Linehan for use with women diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. This evidence-based psychotherapy has many facets, including a focus on regulating emotions, components of cognitive behavioral therapy, increasing mindfulness, and managing distress. Well, why are we talking about DBT in correction setting and a Start Now training? As we continue in the next few slides, we'll begin to understand how Start Now emerged from this initial look at the practice of DBT in corrections. The data here is from a study published in 2007, which used the SCID, a structured clinical interview that allows for diagnosis of DSM psychiatric disorders with inmates. The results are broken down by sex and diagnosed personality disorder. As you can see, the rates of these specific disorders in correctional settings are high. Therefore, offering treatment that focuses on helping inmates manage impulsivity, aggression, and emotional reactivity, among other concerns, has the potential to offer tremendous benefit. This next study by Dr. Trussman and colleagues looks specifically at impulsive aggression in the correctional setting, published in 2009. The intervention examined in this study was DBT modified for the corrections setting. DBT-CM, corrections modified, was found to significantly reduce targeted behavior from baseline after the 16-week group treatment. DBT-CM and case management remained significant at the 12-month follow-up. The take-home message here is that the study provides data supporting the use of DBT-CM to help inmates manage impulsive aggression. The study highlighted in these slides lends further support to the use of DBT-CM for incarcerated populations. This time, adolescent males were the targeted population of intervention. The results of the study of 38 participants indicated that DBT-CM can significantly impact physical aggression, distancing coping methods, and disciplinary action related to difficult behavior. Moving to the next slide, we will shift the conversation from DBT-CM to the development of Start Now. 
DVT-CM, while demonstrating efficacy in the settings and with the populations mentioned, is not without challenges. Correctional settings experience frequent turnover in staff, and routinely training new staff in DBT can lead to substantial costs. Another concern is the language level of DBT-CM. The content of the DBT materials does not match well with the average reading level of corrections populations. In addition to the cost, there are copyright concerns related to the use of DBT. Therefore, Dr. Trussman and colleagues began to consider a different path to providing a training program for correction settings that worked around these challenges. Start Now is an evidence-informed, manual-guided skills training program for individuals with behavioral disorders. Start Now is designed to encompass a variety of settings, including corrections and communities, and is well-suited for people who experience impulsivity, emotional instability, and substance misuse. Start Now is informed by a variety of theoretical approaches and models, which you see here. Cognitive behavioral skills are the primary components of Start Now, and the studies on DBT noted in previous slides influence this skills training program as well. Elements of motivational interviewing and cognitive neurorehabilitation are incorporated into Start Now. We will share more specific details later in the training. A gender specific approach is included in Start Now as groups such as those in correctional settings are often comprised of one sex. There's a strong possibility that some of the participants in our skills training groups may have histories of trauma. Start Now is informed by principles that promote sensitivity to the needs of these individuals. Let's move into the clinical approaches that influence Start Now. We will begin with cognitive behavioral interventions. At the heart of CBT is the idea that our behaviors are a function of antecedents and our expected consequences. This functional analysis is one of the primary components of Start Now. Let's run through a brief example to highlight this core cognitive behavioral tenet. A normally gentle, easygoing 60-year-old boy named Joey has recently become physically aggressive with his nine-year-old brother, Will, on several occasions. This is becoming a daily event. Turns out that Will likes to provoke Joey in different ways, but mostly by calling him names that Joey cannot stand. When we talk through things with Joey, he is able to identify that when his big brother calls him names, he thinks that Will does not like him and is trying to make him mad, which makes Joey feel really angry and sad. So he punches Will. A very rudimentary example, but even for us advanced adults, we can usually break down what we think are complex interpersonal interactions and behaviors by a straightforward functional analysis. Back to Joey and Will. We can work with Joey to help him recognize his thoughts and emotions and find more appropriate outlets when he thinks or feels these things. We probably should work with Will on his behaviors too. It is important to understand how events or triggers lead to thoughts and emotions, which in turn influence how we react. Just like CBT in the clinical setting, Start Now places emphasis on learning and practicing new skills during sessions and during the time between sessions. As we move into the manualized content of Start Now a little later, you will see these CBT components included. Role-playing interpersonal situations, brainstorming ideas on how to manage concerns or situations, problem solving, and shaping of desired behaviors. As I mentioned previously, we will use functional analysis routinely in Start Now, which we identify as the ABC system in skills training. Also, there will be a real-life practice exercise at the close of group sessions that outlines and encourages practice of skills learned during the current session. Members will be encouraged to process their practice at the start of the next session. Just as we assume a portion of our participants have histories of trauma, we understand that some of our Start Now participants will have experienced head injuries and or may be limited in their verbal, reading, and processing abilities. You will notice in the manual that several images are included to avoid too much emphasis on written language. The manual also includes ideas regarding how to engage people who may be difficult to draw in using shaping and reinforcement principles, along with some motivational interviewing focused interventions, which we will discuss further in our upcoming slides. Motivational interviewing is a style of counseling that is focused on targeting motivation for change. MI was born out of the treatment of problematic alcohol use and is tied to the trans theoretical model, which identifies specific stages of change that people go through when modifying behaviors. 
there's evidence supporting the efficacy of combined MI and CBT use, for example, in the treatment of cannabis use with adolescents and youth. This slide identifies literature in support of the use of MI. MI can improve adherence to addiction treatment, reduce recidivism, reduce substance-related problems and criminal attitude, and reduce DUI behaviors in adolescents. Briefly, at the core of MI is the idea that people are most likely to change when they see the benefits of change. For some, the primary reason for quitting smoking, for example, may not be avoiding lung cancer, but perhaps finally having their clothes smell like detergent and their hair smell like shampoo. MI contains four key principles. First, this style of counseling focuses on expressing empathy to patients, affirming their struggle, for example, with substance use and acknowledging the challenges of changing behaviors. We must accept patients where they are, even if their motivation is low and their pace of change is slow. Second, using open-ended questions, we begin to explore pros and cons of patients' behaviors. When they generate positive aspects and negative aspects of their marijuana use, for example, they begin to see for themselves the discrepancy between their goals and their marijuana use. Rolling with resistance is all about avoiding power struggles with people attempting to make changes. It is natural to resist change and get defensive when we have not begun to consider change or are just getting familiar with the idea of doing things differently. Instead of meeting resistance with more pressure, we as facilitators can take a step back and refocus on empathy and acceptance. This can be done, for example, by reflecting feelings and content of people's statements. Lastly, when we hear people make comments about their success and efforts to change, we want to reinforce those efforts, no matter how big or small. We want to encourage people to feel that they possess the tools to manage their concerns and make changes. When it comes to behavior change, there will generally be ambivalence or feeling two opposing ways about our potential shift. For example, we may feel equally strong reasons to continue smoking marijuana as we do to stop our use. As providers, we can more easily roll with resistance when we accept ambivalence as a normal state related to behavior change. What will help people move toward motivation for change is our empathy and acceptance, not pushing people to change more quickly than they are prepared for. MI is strength-based. We can target people's self-efficacy by exploring their strengths with them and reinforcing when they overcome challenges and take steps towards doing things differently. Eliciting change talk is a component of MI where generally, through open-ended questions, providers offer a space for people to talk about their own path to change. Start Now has built-in mechanisms to elicit change talk and to help people work through ambivalent feelings about change. Neurocognitive rehabilitation focuses on specific skills training to help people regain their ability to focus, monitor their thoughts and behaviors, and manage their behaviors and emotions. When people experience traumatic brain injuries of various origins, it is common for cognition and executive control to be impacted. These tasks are not simply rote or redundant, but focus on real world situations. Start Now, as discussed previously, draws from DBT components. In particular, the mindfulness aspects of DBT are utilized as part of focusing skills for Start Now participants. There is an emphasis in Start Now on accepting different points of view about the same subject. In this context, behaviors we are interested in changing. As mentioned earlier, a gender-specific approach is included in Start Now, as groups such as those in correctional settings are often comprised of one sex. You will find included in the Start Now materials, examples and images specific to the gender of the participants. Also, the facilitator manual includes specific tips related to approaching some gender-specific concerns. For example, hypermasculinity or toxic masculinity with men and affiliative needs for women. Trauma-sensitive care understands that when we experience trauma, we will find various ways to cope and adapt to the ongoing trauma, including the thoughts, emotions, and behaviors that follow traumatic events. For example, isolating from others, hypervigilance, and substance use. Sometimes our means of coping with highly stressful events are no longer helpful and can cause us problems in our relationships and for ourselves. 
Start Now emphasizes grounding skills and monitoring one's own thoughts, behaviors, and emotions. Putting these pieces of different theories and interventions together, we can outline some overall principles of this skills training program as part of Start Now. First, personal responsibility is reinforced. We all have strengths. Start Now focuses on awareness of strengths and building upon them. And we both appreciate and respect that individuals participating in Start Now have different capabilities and limitations. While the content of the materials will be applicable to the lives of all participants, their journeys likely will look different. As facilitators of Start Now, we will have the opportunity to teach connections between thoughts, feelings, and behaviors regularly. Self-regulation, again, is key. Slow down, think before you act or react. And lastly, to reiterate personal responsibility again, we cannot simply blame our behaviors on our emotions. We must take responsibility for our emotions and through awareness of them, navigate how to respond to situations where intense feelings are triggered. Let's now move from the background and development of Start Now to discussing evidence for its efficacy and for whom it can work. The following slides contain abstracts of articles published related to the efficacy of Start Now. Here, Dr. Sample and colleagues share the use of functional analysis and a core component known as ABCs, which are utilized in the Start Now program with incarcerated individuals to help them manage their behavior. A is antecedent or activator, B is behavior, and C is consequences. The paper provides explanations, tips, and examples related to application of the ABCs in skills training groups. This second example from the literature also focuses on use of Start Now with the inmate population. Here, the authors provide evidence that inmates were satisfied with Start Now program participation, hospital stays for the inmates were reduced, and psychotropic medication use increased slightly. Improved outcomes were noted for those who attended more Start Now sessions. This paper set the stage for further investigation of the implementation of Start Now and recommended developing an implementation team, reinforcement of training, and a standardization of data collection related to outcomes. The paper highlighted here by Dr. Tressman and colleagues aimed to examine the relationship between attendance in Start Now and rule infractions for incarcerated individuals. Both male and female inmates in Connecticut correctional facilities were studied retrospectively. The take home data point here is that for each additional session of Start Now attended, there was a 5% reduction in incidence of disciplinary reports. And inmates with higher security scores appeared to benefit most from the program. Start Now was also found to be effective across primary psychiatric diagnostic classifications in conclusion, Start Now works for inmates when measured by reduction in rural infractions. A publication in Psychiatric Services in 2016 stated that each Start Now session completed was associated with a 5% decrease in subsequent inpatient psychiatric hospital stays. So, to reiterate and drive home the main conclusion, studies indicate a 5% decrease in the incident rate of disciplinary reports for each additional session of Start Now attended. Additionally, Start Now has evidence that it effectively reduces disciplinary reports across psychiatric diagnostic categories and with comorbidities. This slide and the next touch on important aspects of Start Now and any skills training, fidelity with respect to implementation and participant satisfaction. Shown on this slide is a snapshot of the quality assurance form from Start Now session one. The facilitator manual contains fidelity monitoring forms for each Start Now session that can be used by Start Now trained facilitators and supervisors to monitor other facilitators' adherence to the training protocol. As you can see, both content and process are evaluated. Presented here is participant satisfaction data collected from 619 inmates related to their participation in Start Now. The x-axis is broken down into overall satisfaction and satisfaction by each of the four units of Start Now. As you can see, the outcomes of the satisfaction surveys all fall into the yes, it helped to yes, it helped a great deal ranges. The higher number is higher satisfaction.
StartNow is currently being used in several prison systems, jails, and forensic hospitals throughout the country. It has also been translated into different languages and is used internationally. Part of the goal for this training in particular is to help guide and train other systems who want to incorporate StartNow into their organization. With the core content generally remaining the same, StartNow vignettes and language can be modified for a variety of settings, including community settings. Here are some examples of community adaptations of StartNow that have been done in the US and Europe. These adaptations include use with conduct disorder adolescent girls, duly diagnosed individuals in the justice system, and patients in the OBOT treatment program at Carilion Clinic. Additional interest in school system adaptation is also underway. At this point, it is time to jump into the details of Start Now Skills Training Program. The training manual contains four units for a total of 32 sessions. Frequency of sessions will be discussed after the following overview. The first unit is entitled My Foundation, Starting With Me. This initial section of Start Now contains 10 individual sessions which focus on self-management, including improving self-control and management of stressors. In this unit, we will be introduced to the two primary skills that will be revisited throughout the duration of the program, the ABCs and focusing exercises. Participants will set a treatment goal, and sessions also focus on wellness, acceptance of self and situation, enhancing spirituality, boundaries, and values. The next eight sessions of Start Now, Unit 2, continue to focus on the self. Emotions are the primary target, specifically dealing with upset feelings. Participants will spend time both recognizing and developing a better understanding of their emotions and the role of feelings in their lives. Coping is an important aspect of this unit. Means of coping discussed include behavior, cognitive, and imagery methods. Participants will delve into common emotions that may be difficult to deal with, including depression, anxiety, anger, and grief. Unit three, which is eight sessions, shifts from the self and toward interpersonal relationships, building upon the skills learned in prior units. Participants will learn to nurture and develop positive relationships via the skills listed below. And while it may be easy to identify these skills as important to relationships, implementing and practicing them at home, work, and in social situations can be complicated. This unit specifically offers participants the opportunity to work on listening, setting boundaries, assertiveness, and aspects of communication with others. Lastly, Unit 4, which is six sessions, concludes the skills training program while setting the scene for the future. Sessions will focus on appropriate goal setting and developing hope, with specific focus on both educational and work-related goals. Problem-solving skills that can be used in different areas of our participants' lives are also covered in this unit. Now that we have an overview of the content of Start Now, let's review concerns related to clinical implementation. Start Now is appropriate for a wide variety of participants. It is particularly applicable for people whose coping skills are limited and who frequently engage in maladaptive means of coping. Start Now is appropriate for outpatient group settings as well as inpatient settings. Content of these sessions fits well with patients who have a history of suicide attempts or other parasuicidal behaviors. As mentioned previously, the skills training program has been adapted in our institution for patients participating in medication-assisted therapy related to opioid use disorder. We encourage facilitators to consider using Start Now for patients who will require or do currently require ongoing care in the community. A brief note on language. Start Now participants must be able to verbally understand English or Spanish when a Spanish language facilitator is available. Those with limited literacy should not be excluded from Start Now sessions. Rather, facilitators are encouraged to accommodate these participants when it comes to written exercises. To be qualified to become a group facilitator in Start Now, 
One, individuals must be willing and motivated to use this approach. Participants are likely to have better outcomes when we as facilitators believe in the methods we are using. Potential facilitators also must have experience in counseling and group therapy. And three, facilitators must complete the Start Now training, which you are doing right now by participating in this program. Completion leads to certification. Two facilitators are not always necessary for Start Now. Start Now can be done with just one. However, when working with higher risk group members, having co-facilitators may be indicated. Start Now was originally designed to be 32 sequential sessions offered two times per week. This structure may be possible in inpatient and correctional settings. However, in community settings, it may not be possible to gather group members together two times per week. So one time weekly or every other week can be appropriate depending on the group's needs. For example, medication assisted therapy patients with opioid use disorder meet for group one time per week. These groups can also accommodate continued enrollment, which means individuals may initiate attendance at any point along their curriculum, units one through four, sessions one through 32, but still complete the entire program. Participants, when appropriate, will be provided with a certificate of completion at the end of each of the four units. Parameters for the number of absences per unit are outlined here. Depending on the setting and participant needs, facilitators may use their clinical judgment related to participant continuation of group if several excused absences occur. Expect each group session of Start Now to last for approximately one hour to 75 minutes. The 32 sessions can be completed in four months if offered to participants two times per week. As mentioned before, when Start Now groups are continuously open to enrollment, Participants can be added at any point in the flow of sessions. Ideally, participants would start at the beginning of one of the four units. However, Start Now is designed to be pragmatic, and facilitators can use their clinical judgment related to the nuances of open and closed groups. When it comes to closed groups, all members will be oriented together at Unit 1, Session 1. For open or continuous enrollment, the following elements from session one should be included when a new member is admitted. One, review group rules. Encourage current participants to actively engage in this process. Two, have the new participant establish a treatment goal. And three, introduce both the ABCs and focusing skills. This slide lists the necessary materials for facilitating Start Now groups. You will notice an absence of technological needs for in-person sessions, which allows for flexibility in terms of where the sessions can be held. With the emergence of telehealth as common means of practice, we are delving into the use of Start Now in virtual group sessions. We are observing how this skills training works by a telehealth groups and are currently processing how to implement Start Now into our virtual platform. With the in-person format, essential needs include a private space, facilitator and participant paper materials, pens or pencils, including individual workbooks, a dry erase or chalkboard, and copies of focusing exercise materials. These next few slides break down the components of Start Now sessions, including an estimated amount of time necessary for different sections. If you are providing open groups, be sure to welcome new members and cover introductory material group rules, goal setting, ABC, and focusing skills. Next, real life practice exercises are reviewed for approximately 10 to 15 minutes. Encourage members to share their experiences and offer feedback and encourage participants to do so for each other. Following that review, an ABC exercise will be done or a focusing exercise will be shared with the group, which will take about 10 to 15 minutes. You may ask an individual to go through the ABCs with an event they discussed during the real life practice review, or you may provide a breathing exercise, mindfulness meditation, word search, or other focusing activity. Typically, facilitators alternate ABCs and focusing exercises at each session. After the ABC or focusing exercise, a new topic will be introduced, including rationale for the topic. It is important to let participants be in the expert role when possible. Rather than just providing education, ask open-ended questions to get people talking and use reflection and feedback. Make efforts to link the new skills to examples participants shared in the group 
and seek out chances to ask questions that elicit change talk. Show enthusiasm for the topic and remember to roll with resistance if participants demonstrate resistance during the discussion. Moving toward the end of group, an in-session practice exercise is offered for about 15 minutes. This can include examples such as brainstorming, role-playing interpersonal interactions or communication skills, or educational discussion related to a new topic. Encourage all members to participate and to take notes or sketch if they are interested. The final aspect of the session will be the assignment and discussion of a new real-life practice exercise for the time between this session and next. Not homework, but exercise. This slide highlights facilitator certification criteria, and you can refer to your facilitator manual, Appendix 4, for more information. We encourage facilitators in training to read the manual prior to participating in the two-day training. The first half of this two-day training is the didactic component that you are going through with me currently, including passing the post-test, which all of you will be able to do successfully. Next, all will practice co-facilitating a role play practice group, and as appropriate, each of you can play the role of group participants for other co-facilitator practices. The final piece of certification requires that you facilitate two consecutive groups where your fidelity rating scores are sum or fully on all content and process aspects of the quality assurance form of the Start Now sessions. Beginning here and moving forward for the next several slides, we will cover some of the specific content of the Start Now sessions, beginning with Unit 1. At session one, these questions are posed to participants to help them begin exploration of change in their own lives. Queries regarding reasons we resist change and ways in which we have resisted change allows for improved awareness and understanding of the fact that we all have some element of resistance to change, as well as the whys and hows specific to our lives. When we mentioned change talk in previous slides related to MI, here are some basic examples of what you might hear. You can hear the self-efficacy, personal responsibility, and progressive tones in these statements. Here, we set the groundwork for the tools participants will utilize to effectively make changes in their lives. In the early stages of Unit 1, we will orient participants to the four units that we have covered previously in this presentation. You can show the map of how the group will progress from focusing on themselves and their emotions to working on relationships and ultimately goal setting for their future. During the first session and future sessions for open groups, review group rules. You can look through the rules on this slide as I review some of the process points related to group rule discussion. We suggest encouraging one or alternating group members to read each rule and take time for any questions, suggestions, or necessary discussion. Ask group members for verbal commitment to adhere to these group rules throughout your time together. Ideally, these rules can be posted in a regular group room, but we realize that doing so may not always be practical. Periodic revisiting of group rules for closed groups may be appropriate. Here is a page pulled from the participant workbook related to goal setting. This page gives a nice example of how the language in Start Now Manual is simple, clear, and direct. And the football goalpost offers a nice visual to anchor the topic. Participants are asked here to provide a specific personal goal for Start Now, as well as reasons why that goal is important to them. At the start of the next meeting, participants will be encouraged to share their goal and reason for their goal with the group to generate discussion and or feedback. As we have mentioned, Start Now has two recurrent components, ABCs and focusing skills. Here we define focusing as tuning in to what is happening right now at this moment. When introducing focusing, we will cover examples of focusing, such as taking time to relax and breathe, listening carefully to a family member or friend, or reading quietly. We also will explore examples of not focusing, such as multitasking, texting or talking while driving, and trying to listen to more than one person at a time. We know that practice allows for improvement in focus, which is why we engage in focusing exercise at every other session. We can refer participants to the focusing how to practice the information in their manual. 
Prior to starting a focusing exercise, let participants know how long it will take. Provide clear and simple instructions. Offer suggestions regarding how to get back on track if we lose focus. For example, if we're doing a breathing exercise, instruct participants to return to counting seconds when breathing in and out if their minds begin to wander. There are several modalities for focusing exercises and we should make efforts to vary the exercise modality and not focus on one particular type of exercise. The variety is important as not all exercises will appeal to all participants. Like different learning styles, certain focusing exercises may be more appealing and effective to individual participants. Referring back to trauma-sensitive care, we want to make clear that closing eyes is optional as we do not want to increase anxiety with these exercises. Before we start, we should check in with the group regarding questions. The start and stop of focusing exercises should be clear. Processing is very important. How was that exercise for people? What did they like or not like? Those are some questions that you can ask of the participants. In session four, we discuss how increased self-control might improve participants' lives. The main mechanism taught in Start Now and repeated throughout the training is the ABC system. Breaking down our behavior into smaller, specific components can allow us to improve our control. A, activator, also known as antecedents, but activator is a more user-friendly term. B, behavior, and C, consequences. While we typically find the ABC system used for negative behaviors, it can be just as useful to break down what led to positive behaviors for participants. When we use ABCs with past behaviors, we can then apply what we learn to the present. It is important to highlight that focusing helps with ABCs, as it allows us to slow down, understand what is happening in situations, and respond appropriately. Here is a specific example of using the ABC method as it is applied to start now. You can see here that someone is being nagged about washing the car. The activators are broken down into what, where, when, as well as thoughts and feelings. Going into detail here helped the person realize that part of the problem was being nagged in the evening and during dinner with the kids, the anger, annoyance, and thoughts that someone is trying to ruin his life. Although retrospectively, the person seems to feel that they could have done better than slam the door and walking out, they're able to process both the positive and negative consequences of doing so. At the bottom, you can see this individual generated an alternate behavior, which is to reassure the person that they will complete the task within the next two days. As noted, this consequentially seems like a better choice for the family, but does not allow the person the chance to share their frustration about being nagged. So here we have the ABC system in action, which will be used throughout Start Now skills training. In summary, we will inform participants that the ABC method will increase self-control and should be practiced once per week. Copy and share blank forms with everyone. Encourage participants to bring a completed ABC form on the day it is to be reviewed and discuss an example using the dry erase or chalkboard. Feel free to provide written feedback to participants if they turn in their completed ABC forms for review. In session seven, we focus on self-care skills. We discuss the reasons why self-care is important and discuss wellness from both a physical perspective, such as eating healthfully, exercising, sleeping, and going to the doctor, as well as the mental and emotional perspective, relaxing, reading, being artistic, learning new things, and building self-confidence. In this section of training, we also touch on the topic of medications, including side effects, and talking with your doctor about your medicines. Here's the self-care real life practice exercise. This task encourages participants to remember ways they took care of themselves in the past few months. Participants are asked to rate themselves on a four point scale regarding how much they have focused on these areas of wellness, including healthy eating, sleep, exercise, and building self-confidence. Session eight covers the spiritual self and focuses on recognizing and celebrating this aspect of ourselves. Discuss how focusing can be related to spirituality and explore prayer, organizations, looking for meaning in life, 
and spiritual music and literature. Session 9 opens with a definition of values and exploring what values mean to participants. For example, what do you value that you would bring to a deserted island? Name a time when you were proud of yourself. Identify an especially positive day. Discuss managing when our values conflict with others. A real life practice exercise related to values is offered. Now you have a basic understanding of what is covered in Unit 1 with specific examples of the content of those sessions. Unit 2 covers a broad variety of information related to emotions and coping. Let's look at a few sessions from this section. Session 11 introduces Unit 2. Discussion of emotions as an invading force starts this session. What this means is that sometimes people view emotions as things that they put up with or avoid. These beliefs or behaviors may be related to a lack of understanding of emotion, learning that some feelings are not okay, or discomfort related to strong emotions. In session 11, we cover how emotions can help us and lead to a fuller life. Review this chart, which offers feelings, an image depicting each emotion, a verbal description of the emotion, and some helpful synonyms. As with other sessions, provide a real-life practice exercise related to emotions near the end of the session. Session 13 offers a glimpse into using actions to cope with feeling upset. Discuss how feelings such as depression may lead to inactivity, such as just wanting to stay in bed. Or we may act impulsively in response to an emotion, such as arguing or fighting based on our anger. The concept of our actions impacting our emotions is offered here. For example, talking with people about our concerns, exercising, doing something enjoyable, all these actions can influence how we feel. Here is a great exercise from session 14, which looks at how we can cope with emotions through our thoughts and imagery. Session 14 offers an opportunity to reinforce one of our core components of Start Now, that how we think about and process situations can impact our emotional reaction and behavior. Explain thought errors and review examples outlined in the participant materials. And for any of you who are into cognitive therapy, you will recognize these errors immediately, from believing that we know what others are thinking or feeling to expecting the worst case scenario. This slide continues the exercise from the previous slide. Here, we outline examples for participants of thought errors, some common statements we may say related to the error, and some thought replacement options. Negative self-talk is one error to which we all can relate. We all likely have thought this way from time to time. I can't do anything right. I'm not good at anything. This exercise encourages participants to think more broadly and realistically it is likely that we can do many things and do many things well. If people criticize us in a broadly negative way, it can hurt, but those folks are probably wrong. Here, we can acknowledge our mistakes or problems while acknowledging that we are making efforts to improve and that people who say we are all bad or all awful, they are wrong to say so. Session 16 focuses on coping with anger. Explore anger as both a potentially problematic emotion as well as a useful one. One important aspect of this session is a review of common triggers that we experience and can lead to anger, being hurt, being criticized, being betrayed. Look at signs that anger is present, tension, increased voice volume, heart racing, clenching fists. In addition, we will work on skills to prevent acting impulsively from anger, slowing down, deep breaths, self-talk, Removing ourselves from the situation, physically or mentally, and changing thoughts are all positive alternatives. The Session 16 Real Life Practice Exercise encourages participants to focus on a recent example of them not handling their anger as well as they would have liked and exploring alternatives. Other sessions in this section focus on coping with other challenging emotions, including depression, worry, and anxiety. At this point, we will conclude our in-depth review of session examples from Unit 1 and 2. You should now have a good sense of the background and development of Start Now, who it works for, and the structure and implementation of the skills program. 
As we move toward the conclusion of this training, a reminder for all of us to unplug and to recharge. Our final slides will look at sustaining and improving the Start Now program. Start Now has built in several elements for quality assurance monitoring. First, participant attendance in the skills training is monitored. Also, each Start Now session has a supervisor rating sheet that includes evaluation of facilitators' adherence to content and process aspects of each session. Lastly, the manual includes both participant and facilitator questionnaires that allow for periodic data collection related to satisfaction with Start Now. To assure effective facilitation, supervisors are expected to observe one facilitator session from each of the four units. Here is a screenshot of the session one supervisor rating sheet. In the contents section, you can see that supervisors are expected to rate on a three point scale facilitator adherence to five aspects of the session, including reviewing the introduction, providing new material in the session and assigning the real life practice exercise. The process section covers aspects of Start Now that are expected to be used throughout the sessions and units, including aspects of motivational interviewing and general group process. The participant satisfaction questionnaire shown here can be used for each of the four Start Now units. Participants can rate different parts of their Start Now experience using a numbered Likert scale, which includes emojis for visually oriented participants. The questionnaires aim to gather data related to participant opinion about the quality of the unit, whether they got the help they needed, how well the unit met their needs, satisfaction with help, and whether they would recommend Start Now to others. The facilitator satisfaction questionnaire covers many of the same content areas for those providing Start Now to participants. It is encouraged that this questionnaire also be administered at the end of each unit. How do we know our Start Now facilitation is successful? We can measure success in a few different ways. To start, viewing attendance measures gives us a sense of participants' dedication to being part of the skills training process. The satisfaction measures allow us to view how well both the participants and facilitators feel the materials and delivery of the materials met the needs of the group members. And the fidelity measures allow for periodic evaluation of facilitator adherence to both the content and process components of the sessions. In addition, standard measures of participant impulsivity and aggression administered at different time points allow us to view the hopefully downward trend in behaviors that represent these constructs. In summary, let's take a moment to reiterate the definition of start now. In addition to forensic environments, we are seeing this skills training used successfully in correctional and community settings. As a reminder, the facilitator manual is comprised of four distinct units with a total of 32 sessions. Now that you've completed the didactic training, you have the knowledge you need to cover all the points listed on this slide and to pass the post test. We wish you success with the brief test and in your ongoing Start Now training. Following completion of the post-test, you will be ready to participate in the practical portion of the Start Now training. Thank you very much for taking the time to participate in this training. We appreciate your interest in learning the Start Now program and providing this training to participants in the varied clinical environments and areas of the world in which you work. Please feel free to contact us if you have any questions want to provide feedback on your experience or need further information or resources.